Welcome to Marketplace Tech Bytes, our weekly review of the biggest stories making headlines across the industry. I'm your host, Lily Jamali. This week on the show, is this the end of Google search as we know it? Then a bipartisan group in the Senate proposes a $32 billion roadmap for regulating AI and OpenAI's chatbot gets an upgrade and a personality. Helping me to dig into all of that this week is Anita Ramaswamy. She's one of our regular contributors here and a reporter now with The Information. Welcome. Hi, Lily. Great to be here. Hey, Hey, and congratulations on the new job. We're so thrilled for you. Thank you. We're going to start, as we always do, with our bite of the week. This is a number that gives us a little insight into the week that was in tech. And Anita, what do you have for us? So I have 5.9 million, and that's an approximation from SEMrush, which is a marketing agency, about how many Google searches take place per minute. Wow. Say that again, 5.9? 5.9 million. Million. Wow, wow, wow. I believe it, but it's just kind of overwhelming to hear that number. Uh, And it's actually a great segue into our first story for the week, which is Google announcing a bunch of new features for its products at the IO Developers Conference in Mountain View. The major theme here, AI assistance. And the biggest announcement, certainly the one that I saw getting the most traction, was its Gemini AI is going to be taking over Google search. Anita, As best as you can tell, what is this going to look like as Google envisions it? Yeah, so typically, you know, most people who use Google are used to seeing what what people refer to as just eight eight to 10 blue links on that homepage. And what AI is going to do is take all of those links and try its best to summarize, you know, the useful content in them. And it'll appear in a little preview at the top of your Google search. So it'll be a bit of a summary, but Obviously, that's open to a lot of subjectivity. You know, what information is actually important? What information should the AI be displaying? And that raises all sorts of questions about, you know, this totally new way of displaying information and answers when somebody does a Google search. Right. And well, they did a demo and it hit a little bit of a snag this week. Gemini's new image search function made a factual mistake at the conference. The Verge says this shows the fatal flaw of every large language model to date, confidently making up the wrong answer. Having said though, having said that though, uh, Marketplace Tech producer Rosie Hughes tested this out herself. Um, we actually have a clip of that and it worked pretty well. Um, and Anita, I wonder, you know, we've seen all the different reviews. Generally, what would you say is the consensus view of this new AI assisted search function? I think it's really convenient and it's user friendly. I mean, when somebody does a Google search, they're not necessarily looking for eight to 10 blue links to click on. They are looking for the answer to a question they're asking. I will caveat it saying that, you know, anything that you see in that little AI summary, it might not be totally factually true. So you got to take it with a grain of salt. But in terms of a starting point, when you're just starting to set out on, you know, answering a question, I've heard people say that it's, it's pretty convenient. And if, you know, Google can really manage to get it to the point where it's more accurate, it's not hallucinating, um, you know, then it can be a really powerful product. Yeah, those hallucinations do loom large here because you can get mistakes. You can also end up getting less information and more opinion when you do it this way. That's the concern anyway. Yeah, that's also an interesting point because, you know, it's aggregating the AI just like a human being would different sources that are available on the internet and making sense of it itself just like a human would. And there is that bias, you know, that that comes with sort of the the algorithm just nitpicking what what it is that they want to show you. Absolutely. And as somebody who is very much tethered to the Google ecosystem myself from search to email and so much more, I'm not sure how I feel about this. I am looking forward to playing with it a little bit more. But Google is putting a lot of money behind this $12 billion or so per quarter. So that's every three months is going to be spent on capital expenditures, which we're expecting will mean a whole lot of data centers to support this effort as they push deeper into AI. Well, next to Washington, where I happen to spend the bulk of my week, Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer is calling for a $32 billion per year spending on public and private sector research and development on what else but AI. Um, It's all in a 20-page roadmap released this week. Anita, that's like a billion and a half dollars per page. I did the math so you wouldn't have to. (laughs) Um, But what stood out to you as far as priorities that are laid out in this document? 
One of the priorities, I mean, actually to take a step back first, this is just a roadmap. It's not actual legislation. And I thought that was quite interesting because you have all these senators coming together and trying to give a detailed overview of this whole host of problems and issues that could be raised by AI. So the document includes all sorts of things like, you know, what are we going to do when AI displaces people's jobs? One of the priorities that I noticed was deep fakes. You know, the idea that AI can create these false images or images of people that are unauthorized. And that seems to be the, the priority in terms of these legislators are planning to introduce um, actual legislation on Wednesday that would prevent the use of deep fakes in election campaigns. So that, because the upcoming election, you know, it's, it's so soon, seems to be like top of mind, but the document itself spans a whole host of topics. Yeah. So you, you talked there about, you know, safety standards for AI as part of this. You also mentioned, you know, figuring out how to handle all the job displacement that could come because of AI. Also, using AI on national security is another priority that stood out to me. How is this being received in the tech community? I mean, is there going to be a backlash here or have they sufficiently shaped these priorities to their <laughs> liking at this point? See, I think that there's some, you know, cynicism in the tech community that Congress is going to be able to get anything done. I mean, if you think about, besides the TikTok ban, con Congress hasn't really passed any meaningful mm -hmm. tech-related law since 2018. And so this is just a roadmap. I haven't heard too much buzz about this in at least, you know, the circles of engineers and people who are working at these tech companies, because I think that they're taking more of an approach of like, you know, once there's actual legislation, we'll talk about it then. But Absolutely. the roadmap just seems to be a starting point. Yeah, got to have a roadmap. You have to start somewhere. Um, well, thank yeah. you. And a great point you make there about the lack of legislation on tech. Um, if you don't count the TikTok ban, it's been a while. Uh, well, finally, uh, we're going to talk even more about AI. Are you sick of this yet? Because I can't seem to get enough. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sick of it. <laughs> the, the last story um, that we wanted to look at this week is about OpenAI, the maker of ChatGPT. The company is announcing the launch of GPT-4.0, which enhances the program's ability to listen and respond by voice, not just text. So this is a pretty big deal. Um, I mean, to some, I actually wanted to get your take on that. On the scale from, you know, incremental to transformational, where do you think this update falls? I would say closer to the side of being transformational, just because if you think mm -hmm. about when Siri first came out, I mean, I don't know what year it was, but it was several years ago at this point. Yeah. This was sort of the promise of what Apple Siri was supposed to do, but never really quite got to achieving. And it could change the entire way we interact with computers. You know, as, as humans, we're so used to typing something in and, you know, interacting in that text-based format. And so far, that is what these AI models that have been coming out have focused primarily on, whether it's text or images. This could unlock a whole new host of even like AI agents or AI assistants where you can directly talk to this virtual assistant and that assistant can get things done for you. And it takes one level of friction out of the whole process of interacting with an algorithm. Absolutely. And ChatGPT's new voice sounds like the AI assistant in the movie Her, which was, of course, voiced by Scarlett Johansson at the launch event uh, this week. ChatGPT Fora was shown doing a lot of different stuff. No glitches here. They were, you know, translating Italian to English in real time, leading a breathing exercise, and even flirting with a researcher. Um, let's play a clip from that. I wrote uh, one last thing. I'd love if you could take a look at. Of course. I'd love to see what you wrote. Show it to me whenever you're ready. Okay, so this is what I wrote down. What do you see? Oh, uh, I see. I love ChatGPT. That's so sweet of you. Yeah, well, I really appreciate all the help. Well, it sounds like they kind of stuck the landing with this launch, Anita. Yeah, and they actually, you know, it was almost a flex on Google in a way because they had this event on Monday where they announced it. Google's I.O. was on Tuesday, and it, it seemed to be a big success. I mean, the coolest use case that I saw coming out of this was that you can show this um, assistant software code and the chatbot will basically describe to you in conversational, like plain language, simple language, what that code actually does. So for somebody with no technical background, I think that could be really useful. And yet, I got to ask you about what's happening in the executive ranks at OpenAI right now. Uh, some pretty big names have been announcing their departures. Ilya Sutskever is probably the most prominent one. He's a co-founder of OpenAI and the chief scientist until very recently. Um, what gives? What's going on there? So 
I don't know that anybody knows for sure, but last year when Sam Altman was briefly ousted from OpenAI as CEO for a couple of days, you know, Ilya was involved in that. And there was a lot of discussion over, you know, the the mission and the purpose of the company. And are they building AI products for, you know, the greater good or are they building it for profit? And it seems to me like, you know, if I just inferring from the situation that maybe some of those tensions might have informed Ilya's decision to leave. It has been a pretty massive shakeup. And I think it's one that we saw the cracks starting to show in that relationship um, mm-hmm. during that incident last year. Yeah, it's interesting because they had done a pretty exemplary job, I would say, these last few months of staying out of the news for things like that, for internal drama, the kind of stuff that got them in trouble over Thanksgiving. Um, Anita Ramaswamy, now with the information. Always so great to have your insights. Thanks for being here. Thank you, Lily. And thanks to all of you for watching Marketplace Tech Bytes Week in Review. Make sure to like this video and please subscribe to us. We are at Marketplace APM. Rosie Hughes produced this week's episode and I'm Lily Jamali. This is APM.